Well, the, so the title is What is Next for Lua, a Personal Perspective. So this is nothing official. This is just some thoughts we are having about changes in Lua and all small changes. I mean, there is nothing, no breakthroughs here. It's just a small talk. Actually, I'd like to, I'm not sure if it will work because we have a, a long room, but I, I, maybe we could, can try to, you can ask questions during the talk. Don't wait until the end to ask questions because a lot of things here is kind of, uh, I, I'm not sure about what I'm talking, so I, <laughs> <laughs> so I need some return about some stuff. So what, as I say, nothing here is, is any very fancy, so maybe mainly I'll talk a little about some libraries, a little about Unicode, and more about the integers. The integer is a discussion that's already going on in the list, and so I'd like to talk personally with some to have a, a better return, and it's much easier to to, to discuss face to face about some stuff. So this is what I'm going to talk. So libraries, mainly I'd like to discuss, I mean, just to, we are thinking about LPEG is one candidate to go into the main distribution. The other one is the, stru I, actually there are two competitor libraries. One is struct, the other is pack that do more or less the same thing. <coughs> so LPEG, I'm not sure everybody is familiar with LPEG. LPEG is a library for pattern matching, and it's a very powerful library for pattern matching. You can do just, just like regular stuff, uh, AZ plus, like any pattern matching stuff, but you, know, you can also uh, build grammars, complete grammars, you can pass, it, it has the, formally you can parse any deterministic uh, context-free grammar with LPEGs. So it's really powerful. You can parse mainly any kind of grammar. But the, the, it's particularly useful for things that are a little more complex than just patterns, but not as complex as entire grammars. But things like regular expressions, for instance, or email addresses and things that are a little more complex than just pattern matching, but so here is a very simple example. It's a, a pattern that matches S, S expressions from Lisp, so an X expression is either an atom or open parenthesis space, zero more S expressions, close parenthesis space, an atom here is a very simple definition. It's just one or more uh, al alphanumeric uh, characters, and space is just zero more space characters. So this is a very simple pattern that matches S expressions, parenterized expressions, nested parenterized expressions. Yes, exactly. That's the one of the main questions that I, I will talk about is that so the, 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 the this is one of the, the cons of the, the, the proposal exactly. So the, the pros, what is good for LPEG is the, it, the LPEG is really, I mean, it's very popular and I think it really offers a very good balance between complexity and expressiveness. It's, it's not very big. And it may become a real differential for Lua. I think it's something that other languages do not have. It's, it's, it, it's really something very different. And it matches very well with Lua. So it could become kind of a, a very good selling point for Lua. And uh, mainly when compared with the current implementation for pattern matching, it's much more Unicode friendly. For instance, this is just a very simple example. If you have a 
m dashes, there is a, a, a Unicode character and you put n dashes, repeat zero or more m dashes, just works in, in with LPEG and it doesn't work with the standard uh, pattern matching in Lua because it's multiple bytes and so with standard pattern matching we will repeat just the last byte. So there is this, these things. <coughs> But we have some problems. Exactly the main one is that it is redundant with the current implementation of pattern matching. So to, in the Lua style, we never keep redundant things. So ideally, we should remove the old pattern matching facility to change for this one. But that would be a big incompatibility it's not because it's not easy to, to. Some things are very easy to adapt. But some things are, are, are not that easy. Pardon? If you talk about expressiveness, it is a superset. But if you talk about the tails, it's, it's, it's not a strict superset. I mean, there is things like, oh, this one returns that index of the last character, the other returns the index of the next character, so there are those small incompatibilities. Also captures, it's a little different, the, the style. We, one thing I'd like to, to explore is exactly if it's possible to implement the, the original pattern matching on top of LPEG. And it is, I mean, formally, it's sure it is possible. But the problems, if, if it is efficient and if, as I say, those small, the, there is always some small details of how things interact that, so that you can have some strange behavior. This is the, 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 the dangerous part sometimes. It looks like it's working exactly the same, but, but it's not. So The other thing is that, although it is small for a complete pattern matching library, but it's much larger than the current implementation that it's very restrict. So actually it's like, uh, it's, what is that? So it's, uh, it has some 2,000, With, is the, if you, it is, yes, it is compatible. Both are compatible. It, it, I mean, patterns spend more memory to build when you build the pattern, but once you, once you have the, but this is kind of static cost. Yes, for once compiled, it, it doesn't use extra, much extra memory, so it's more or less, uh, uh, the same, there won't be big differences. But again, if you use LPEG, pure LPEG, then it's okay. But if you try to use the, that library that I'm planning, then you may have some, um, much more expensive. This is why I say that the compatibility issue is not easily solved. But you. And the last problem of LPEG is not yet mature, although it's been out for a long time, a lot of people use. There is some problems that's always coming again. Although the, the, these are problems, are the good problems, I mean, the, the current implementation does not solve any of these problems, so it would be better anyway. But it's kind of things that, oh, it should be better, and so... Uh, this is one of the. No, mainly improvements. Yeah, but but, yes. But, yes, I think I think the 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 the, the, the interface, the the AP, the the language itself is more or less mature now. The implementation is not very mature. I was talking. Now, some people that even I cannot understand the current implementation. I mean, 
rewriting it so I, I can understand it. It's because it it grew very fast. <laughs> I, I, I think I was in a in some mood some years ago, and now I, I just wrote it, and now I have to decode. And so, the, and so the, there are some problems with extensions. For instance, one thing that would be very good is some mechanism to extend LPEG with in C with primitives in C, that, and this is very immature. So, but as I say, the current implementation of pattern matching Lua does not have anything like that. So. This is something that we could live without, but. <clears throat> so the other library, this is a much simpler library, is uh, for packing and unpacking binary data in strings. This is very common in, in scripting languages. So mainly we have a function pack, you have a string describing for instance, an integer, an integer, and a character, and you give two integers and a character, and it creates a string with this represented in, in bin, uh, binary data. And then unpack to the reverse, you get the same string, the string, the same description, the, the string, and then it returns the elements. Here is the elements, and this is where it ends in the string, so you can, for instance, if you want to do a loop, you can know, uh, I decode the string until up to this position, and then I can continue. If the string is larger than that, I can continue after this point. So it's a very simple library. <clears throat> so the, the pros of this is that it's a very small and simple library. And it's, uh, it's very common. I mean, it's nothing, it's nothing strange. Actually, we, th we planned to put that library into Lua 5.2, but in the end, we, I don't know, I think we forgot or something like that, but it, 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 <laughs> we, uh, we were not very sure, so we decided not, to, not to, to do it, but we were kind of thinking about that. And it has a wide range of uses. I mean, the, like in Lua sockets, sometimes you need to send binary data. And even inside Lua, you may pack. If you have a lot of uh, fancy data, you have to pack them. It's, it's not very efficient but in terms of CPU, but it's very efficient in terms of, of memory. So you can pack huge tables into strings and then unpack them later for, for use. And so there's a... a all kinds of, all the time people have this small problem, oh, I just want to convert this number to, to a binary or reverse, and so it's a very useful library. And one of the main cons of this library is that it may conflict, it's, although it's very, uh, it's very useful, it's not very flexible, it only operates on Lua strings that are inside Lua, so, for instance, one possible extension would be to you want to unpack and pack things outside. You don't want you have a big data structure, for instance, a user data, and you don't, or it's not even a user data; it's just some C data outside, and you want to pack and unpack data directly from there. So, this is a typical. You don't want to create a Lua string to copy the whole data into Lua to be able to pack and unpack this stuff. So, for instance, this is an extension that maybe would not be compatible with this library, and then again we'd have the problem, should we keep this library, should we throw away the library and put another one, so this is, but this is a library that probably will go into the next version of Lewis. We have to decide also the little stuff about the implementation, but it's more or less. <clears throat> so the next, think is about the Unicode. This is also a big discussion about supporting Unicode and what uh, mainly we, we have, what encoding Lua should use. Should we need a new type for Unicode strings? Mainly, no, we should not use a new type for Unicode strings. And that, of course, the first point is Unicode support here, the, the codes, is because Lua has no intention of giving any kind of thing that people call support for Unicode. 
real support for Unicode demand. Huge tables of all kinds of things. Uh, everything is crazy. Everything has millions of cases and millions of... Uh, and Unicode itself has millions of, of facilities and millions of everything. Now they have a feature that I, I didn't know about. Named characters, you can insert a character giving its full name. For instance, so here, because they say that, and of course, it, that the hexacode, hexadecimal code of the character is very cryptic. So you just write here, I want uh, whatever, uh, that uh, uppercase A with um, uh, some kind of mark, and then da 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 and this is, and so it has a table that translates all those huge names into characters, and it's all kind of stuff that Lou, it's never, Lou itself, it's never going to support. But <clears throat> anyway, Lua could offer some first uh, kind of more standard uh, definition that, OK, we are going to use UTF-8 in Lua, and that's the way to do Unicode in Lua. And then to have some very basic primitives. So you could, for instance, if you want to do some libraries in Lua itself, you can have these basic primitives mainly to translate uh, code sequences into strings and to translate strings into code sequences, just very basic stuff. <clears throat> That's it. Operations to deal with the encoding of characters. And as I said, if you are going to choose an encoding for Lua, UTF-8 now seems to be the clear winner. In most places we, you read nowadays, people say, oh, Everybody that is not using UTF-8 is not using because of compatibility issues. They decided too early to use something else. But nowadays, most of the, the people are choosing. I mean, anyone can disagree, but that's what. <clears throat> and for instance, one of the main complaints about UTF-8 that is that it's very Western-centric, that it's very compact for English, reasonably compact for other European languages, but very wasteful for Asian languages. But it, it depends how you measure. For instance, this is a very typical thing if you get the uh, web page in the Asian language, like the front page of Wikipedia in Japan. It's much smaller in UTF-8 than in UTF-16 because a lot of the pages just uh, marks and, and all kinds of stuff that it's written in English or in a reduced character set. So it compensates the extra bytes you need to, to put the proper text. So even, even this problem is not a real problem usually. And of course, UTF-8 is much simpler in Lua. I mean, the, a lot of things just work. It, it is, there are several people already using Unicode. This is something also that people say, oh, we need Unicode support in Lua, but this is uh, Lua Tech is one example. There is, is a, a software that needs a lot of internet, I mean, it, handles Unicode all the time, and it is using Lua. Wikipedia is another software that is all about international stuff, and it's using Lua in its template engine. And I have, there was a very interesting stuff in Adobe. They were doing, uh, they started a project using Lua, and the first thing they did was, oh, we are going to need whatever it is, Unicode support. And so they built a huge library for Unicode support in Lua before the project, because they knew they would need that. And they did the whole project. In the end, they realized they did, didn't need the library at all. They, they could do everything they need without any kind of extra support. <laughs> so, and so it's more a, a problem of, of perception sometimes than a, a real problem of, uh, of course, it depends what you want to do. If you want to do a text editor for Unicode, for whole Unicode in Lua, then you need much more support than Lua 
can offer. But if you just want to manipulate, for instance, to interface with programs that use Unicode that do extra manipulation of your libraries, Lewis do a, a lot of stuff by, without any help. Why is that? Of course, because UTF-8 is compatible with ASCII. You say ASCII in English or ASCII? ASCII? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And so, and Lou, it's very agnostic about strings, so UTF-8 data is just fine for Lua. What is this, your stitching? Yeah, but why you decided to tell me that now? I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't want to know about that. Close. And of course, if you use a text editor that is Unicode that uses UTF-8, you can just put UTF-8 inside literal strings without any problems, although you cannot put the name of the character, but you can just put the character that. I.O. input-output works naturally. UTF-8, of course, provided your operating system understand that, does not interfere with that. File names and the like also, if you're Opera, for instance, in Linux that understands UTF-8 without problems, then Lua can you can have file names with UTF-8 with UTF-8 characters, etc. Everything works just fine. And the, the main problem is that this the string library that the string library of, of Lua mainly assumes that a character is a byte. So most things does not work. Do not work like a string, the translations from bytes and characters from numbers to, to, to characters, uh, upper and lower case, reverse, those kind of functions will not work with UTF-8. And some, even some things that would not work, you can do some little tricks and make it work. For instance, if you the first one is a very simple trick to count the number of code points in a string. That people say, oh, the length of the string, you want the length. This is also very, very um, fuzzy thing about what you mean, the length of a string in Unicode, because you have at least three or four, you have the length in bytes that it's very useful. Still, they say, oh, it's useless. Of course, if you need to store the string, you want to know how many bytes you need to store it. You need the, the length in bytes. Sometimes the, there is the length in code points. That is this, but it's not very useful. You have the length in what they say is a representable character. I forgot the name of some, something that you call a visible entity. And then this is, then you need huge tables. Huh? No, yeah, but they, they have a name for this uh, graphical character. Yes, yeah, so a graphical character that is a, it may have some nine code points for one graphical character, one on, on top of the other, one modifying others, things like that. But then, for instance, this is a very simple pattern to, to you just translate the continuation bytes into, you just erase the continuation bytes and then count how many bytes are left. Here is a, a pattern that matches with, Unico with Unicode co code points. Is anything followed by zero or more continuation bytes? So for instance, if you match a string with those strange characters, you get one, each one of them separate. So there are some simple tricks that you can do even with current Lua. So the, the, what we are thinking about is just a very, as I said, just some more simple functions to easy the, the conversion of from, from numbers, from code points to strings from strings to code points, uh, a primitive length operation that counts the number of code points. 
something to translate positions in bytes to positions in, in actually, sorry, this is the reverse to translate positions in code point. I want the, the NS code point, and I want to translate what byte, what offset is that. And maybe some iterator for code points, some very basic library to do that kind of and then on top of that, of course, you can have extra libraries and all kinds of fancy stuff, but that's outside Lua. So <clears throat> now the main discussion about integers. What is this proposal or this idea? It's not actually a complete proposal. It's more idea. is to add an integer type to Lua. And the type could be either 32 or 64 bit signed integral type. And so why do we need integer types? Pardon? Yeah, this is we will discuss exactly what I mean. The, the, the here, the, 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 sorry, yes, you're right. Uh, yeah, the integer type is not a very good description. The idea is to support for 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 integers <laughs> would be a better description. It may be an integer type. It may be, but the idea is integer support. So, so why do one of the things is that now more and more stuff need 64-bit integers. So this is a main restriction in Lua nowadays, that you doubles only represent up to 63 bits. And so anything larger, you, you can do it easily in Lua. So this is one of the main motivations. The other big motivation is the, the reverse restricted systems that currently it's not uncommon for if you do to very small systems, you compile Lua without using double, you change the Lua number type to an integer type, and so you do not have floating point numbers. And so the idea is that you could have a more uh, regular, uh, I mean, use the same Lua in, in, embedded in very small systems and in large systems, or uh, at least not exactly the same, but with small difference. I mean, the differences between 64 bits integers and 32 bit integers instead of being between doubles and integers, for instance. So, and of course, yeah, this, this problem of perform performance, it's, it's always tricky, but it's something that mainly in hardware without floating point support, of course, the performance would be much better with integers. <clears throat> so now we're talking about to add a kind of integer support into Lua. There is some alternatives. One is to have something separated like an extra type for just for some people say that in the list of 64 bits, you need that, but it's you not need always a few people need that. So you could just add a specific support for 64 bits, like something separate, like uh, for instance, user data or just something external, some, or even explicit support, just this is, 64-bit integer is not numbers. They are something that just for 64-bit quantities. Uh, another thing that people do a lot is the reverse in restricted systems. They do compile Lua using integers, and then they add external support for floating point numbers. This is very common, too. And we think that both alternatives are cumbersome. I mean, they, they, you need new operations in the API to manipulate this new entity. You have to describe any, I mean, most of the problems to put uh, integer inside Lua, you still have with this stuff outside Lua. We have problems with equality. 
because Lua does not consider in, uh, equal stuff if it does not have the same type. So if you have something outside, for instance, you have a zero, a 64-bit integer representing a, a, an integer zero would not be equal to zero. And, and mainly we think that this stuff about 64-bit values is something that it's only going to grow the use. I mean, now it may be some specialized things that need that, but in the future we think that more and more libraries, external libraries and, and external stuff we will need 64 bits. So one another alternative is to use a larger floating point number. So you can use a long double that has a lot of, well, depends, but it has a lot of, much more than 64 bits. That is something that actually in Lua, uh, in the history of Lua, with the very first version of Lua, used floats, not uh, doubles in the beginning. And the main reason we changed to doubles it was exactly because floats could not represent 32-bit integers. So very long time ago, we did exactly this, the equivalent of this decision to support 32-bit integers. We changed it from floats to doubles. But we feel that doubles at that time was much better supported than long doubles are now. I mean, it's, 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 I'm not sure it's very common hardware support for, so Pentium has support for the 80-bit stuff that's already fits 64 bits inside. But the other hardware, I'm not sure how is the support. So, of course, you double the use of memory of Lua because everything is a union that can have a number inside. So if numbers are uh, 128 bits, so every, every value in Lua would be twice the current size. And it does not solve the related problem, the problem of small, I mean, it just makes worse the problem of small machines or it keeps the same in small machines. You still could compile for small machines, use doubles instead of long doubles, but it doesn't solve it anyway. So what are the pros, the, 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 the good points about adding some kind of support for integers inside Lua as a kind of a, either a type or a kind of subtype or something, or just something invisible, just representing integers inside Lua. Well, most programmers already expected an integer type. We would not need to explain about precision of floating arithmetic to. Uh, on a few slides before, you mentioned that you're going to support only signed versions of uh, the yes. yes. Why is it not a position to sign versions of all signed I think it's, that is too complex, and I think we don't have many advantages. It's not advantages, just applications, like I'm coming from Sigma processors, and there, I mean, uh, a lot of really sophisticated parts in C code, at least, were because people were using signed integers, whereas without signed stuff to be used, and then start comparing two numbers. And then one which is supposed to be larger is substantially smaller, because it's interpreted as negative. So, yeah. it's really I do. I think we will have the same problems in in Lua, wouldn't we? The same problems you have in C that you, you when you mix, what happens when you mix types and etc. Well, but usually, again, if you do this big bit set of uh, bit operations, you try not to mix types at all. You just do everything you need to do in whatever usually outside the figures. Then the result is reduced. Yes. But then we'd have both yeah, essentially signed and unsigned. Yeah, signed and unsigned. 
Wow. That's mostly because of the comparison apparatus and the tool. Everything else are more or less the same. It's kind of like Yeah. That could be a, an option, yeah. Because we could just ignore the differences yeah, until... It's just a different size. It just might be for one side a few extra operations, like on side comparison. Because the deep representation, I mean, in the mm -hmm. yeah. thingy, there's a different way of saying which numbers are letters. Are letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could even... Another option that I, I, I thought now is you could have like kind of integers that goes from minus max int to plus max unsigned int. It's like you have a hidden extra bit that tells, essentially you are telling whether it is an unsigned or a signed, but you treat as is just an integers that can go up to the unsigned stuff. Well, one can put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's actually the, the you know, uh, two complementary systems, it's the same, but it's just it's the Yes, way. yes, no, yes, yes, exactly, I know, but... So, yeah, but it's, yeah, you can say it's uh, like from minus and, uh, you know, from minus uh, and max until to plus and minus yes. one, so... Yeah. Because uh, anyway, if you want to, because exactly the, the only difference is in the operations, but you have to have some way to decide which operation you are going to use. So in the representation, you need an, some bit to tell this is an integer or this is an unsigned integer. But you don't have this bit. Yes, you don't have this. Uh, this bit is not explicit, but it, it's, it's, so it's, you could, maybe you could try to tell the user as is kind of, Exactly. This is not an extra bit because you do not have the two complement of it. You, you but you know, at least in C right now, well, even though it's kind of, you can say it's unsigned, but normally it's assumed that user really knows what user is doing. So they're just using, so I can put all this on the user. Yeah. Let's use a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can think about that. It's, it, it has some, some good. I will discuss that in, in, a, in a moment. So, uh, so just keeping with the, 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 the good points about the integers, another, how much time do I have? I, I lost completely the, oh, it's okay. So it's, so one thing is that actually a lot of places now in Lua, mainly in the libraries, we already have integers, but it's kind of sub, and it's kind of invisible, but you, sometimes have these problems, for instance, in the, well, the most visible now is the bit, bit, uh, bit library, but also, for instance, in the string library, all indices are integers, and sometimes you do have, oh, what happens if I, I, I send an out-of-range number as an indices, index, and currently this is kind of, uh, we just don't talk about that, we just <laughs> don't use that and forget. So, I mean, was the, the, the problem you just would make it more clear because now this is an integer and then whatever is the official rule to convert from or to do exceptions, whatever is the rule to convert from a floating to a, an integer, this is what is going to happen in the API. So we have a, a clear description of this stuff. <clears throat> and, of course, as, as I told, we don't need to change uh, numbers to integers on restric restricted hardware. Of course, we, we still have this thing that probably would be useful to have Lua with 64-bit integers and 32-bit integers and with floats, single floats and double floats. But this is much easier to support in the code, so the code could be much more prepare to be easy to just to choose. I want to compile Lua with 32 bits or 64 bits, and I want to use floats or doubles, because this is much easier to, the code to, to, to change that. Then it is now that you, you, a lot of people change numbers to integers, but you have a kind of a, a recipe, you have to change that and that, and I mean, it's not just a flag. 
because the, 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 the changes are so we do not even want to test Lua with integers, for instance, and this is much easier to, to give kind of official support for those versions. <clears throat> well, the, 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 the bad points, of, of course, the main one is this added complexity to the language. I mean, the real, really, the, 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 a single number type is, uh, is currently is a selling point of Lua that it's very simple. And it adds complexity to the code, of course. The code has to handle all, this, all situations where it can meet, can get a, an integer or a float and how to, to treat them differently or, or not. <clears throat> and as I say, although these variants are much easier to support, on the other hand, they will be much more common. Currently, Lua is double always except in very restricted hardware, and then you know, the, then Lua is very different. And with this thing, it would be much more, are you using Lua with 32 bits, or are you using Lua with 64 bits, or that kind of uh, differences would be much more common. <clears throat> and in particular, for current 32-bit machines, this change is not very useful. So this is more something, it is very, it's better for 64-bit machines or for restricted hardware. For common big machine, big in, in the few years ago, big machines with 32 bits, it's not very useful because 32-bit integer with float is it incompatible with the, could be a good option, you use half the memory that Lua used today but it would be incompatible with a lot of applications that assume a double that can handle up to two to 53 integers, uh, values for, for integers. Uh, a double with 32-bit integers offers very few advantages because exactly because you can fit 32-bit integers inside a double. I would just stress on this uh, very little hardware because, you know, uh, counting all the numbers is actually quite a lot of those uh, CPUs that don't have uh, HPU. And I think that first line is actually a huge benefit for any hardware that doesn't have uh, a CPU. Yes, yes, yes. With the here, current 32-bit machines, I, I meant uh, and, and regular computers. Yes, for a restricted... Yeah, I mean, quite a lot of users Mm -hmm. So those devices are made the same to actually use the integer version of Lua because I mean a lot of libraries simply doesn't work. Yes. All over the place. Yes. So so this thing, I mean uh, we are for example using the Pelmon part. Mm -hmm. In this case might have a few times the performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, using the, the using this option. Yes. yes. Yes, no, no the, yes, that's, that, that, that I know. The, this one, what I'm talking is mainly, for instance, my current machine. It, this is one I am saying. This is very strange for me. I am proposing this change. And for my current machine, it doesn't bring me anything very useful. But I, 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 exactly, for anything different, I think it's a, a big benefit. So for these machines, we have this, uh, these problems. But... So the, the next question is exactly how to support integers. We have several different ways. Now, uh, one way, as we mentioned before, is like an explicit new type, something that is really different. And for instance, oh, this is uh, something to represent 64-bit integers. And this is in, incompatible, of course, with a lot of things, and I think too complex to add an, another type. Then, as I mentioned, you have different API functions to ma manipulate this type and compares all those problems I, I mentioned. The second option is the, the, the Lua num path. The L num path is like kind of a try to be invisible. So it's just inside, in the, it's just the representation changes, but it's mainly invisible. The, the, the main idea is that the representation depends only on the value. So if you have an integer value, it's represented as an integer. If you have a floating point value, it's represented as a floating point. 
And this has the good point that is equal values mean equal representation, so equality is much easier to, to implement. You just see if it's equal and it's not equal. The main problem I see here is that it's not really invisible. It's almost, I mean, you cannot do that completely invisible. It breaks one of the main rules of, for instance, of floating point and almost of any representation of uh, numbers in any language is that if you have an operation where the result has an exact representation, then the operation should give that exact representation. And here you cannot get that because it's invisible, but if you try to multiply a very large number, for instance, if you're using 64 bits with uh, doubles, you have a number with 60 bits, so it doesn't fit inside a double, and you multiply that by half, by 0 0.5, so the result would also fit inside an integer perfectly, so you have a, a precise result, but there is no way to compute because if you do the computation in floating point, you, you, I mean, you cannot get the 60 bits, and if you do the computation with integers, you do not have the half to, to multiply. So these rules, are, I, I, I mean, it's because I am a, a, a academic, but for me these rules are very, very strange. And again, as I say, if you try to describe that, then the rules, then it's, it's uh, too complex. And the implementation, I think it's more complex than the other option because all, almost all operations you must always check the result to see if it must trans convert back to integer you or you must convert back to, to floating point. So it's almost all the time, any operation you do, you are converting values back and forth or at least testing whether you need to convert values back and forth the representations. So the third option that we are thinking that actually several languages use an approach that is more or less like this one is that we have a, a, it's almost in, invisible. <laughs> the idea is that it is visible. You have it is something that's part of the specification of the language. Numbers can be floating point numbers or integer numbers. They have different rules, but most of the time, for most of the operations, they behave exactly the same. So the idea is exactly that there is an explicit way to know whether a number is an integer or a float. For instance, could be two functions, is float or is int or whatever it is. But it, I mean, this is an, something that is explicit to the programmer. This number is a float, this number is an int. And you, for, so you do have two kinds of ones. You have one in int, uh, integer one and a floating point one. But, of course, they are equal. The equality, do the, when needed, they do, it does the, the conversion and checks that one is equal to 1.0. Between the, in the invisible solution, you do not, you do not have this. There is explicit rules about that. For instance, if you operate two, if you add two integers, the result is an integer. Yes, for instance, yeah, you have to, it may change, for instance, overflow. You, you discussed that. But for instance, if you multiply a floating point with an integer, the result is a floating point. So you do not have the illusion or the intention that you multiply 60 bits and you have 60 bits in the result. That's the, the, the main difference. Uh, you can give them a, 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 a special use 
Yeah, then we have this problem with small machines. You don't have the gains for small machines that you most of the computations with integers so, and would benefit of not using hardware support for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do you any about the 64-bit stuff? No, yes, but I, what I mean is this exactly uh, there are people that are not using tiny hardware. But tiny hardware might speak to large storage systems. <laughs> no, but what, what I'm talking about here is something that solves to the, I mean, is exactly not having one lure for and something different is trying to, 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 to do a unified solution. Yeah. Numbers. Yes. Yes. This is what I, what I feel exactly. That it's 64 bits. Maybe now it's something special, etc. But it's it's growing and growing, and people will assume them more and more in the future. It is something that is only to get worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lewis still runs on 16 bit machines, but. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I started with 8 bits and I didn't get the 4 bits versions. Yes, I will talk about that, yes. This is one of the main points. <laughs> because <laughs> so this is just more uh, the main point, as I said, that the type of numbers is always the same. They, they have the same type. They are equal. But as I said, the operations here, assume, for instance, if you do uh, a computation with integers, you have integer results. If you do a computation with the, that one of the parameters is a double, you have double results, and everything is well-defined for, for doubles. Mm -hmm. So it means for the newer 5.3, I will have to diligently change ones into 1.0. If you depend on the diff, yes, 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 of course, yes. The, the, the assumption is that usually you do not depend. That's I mean, you only the, the main difference is that you are going to have a result that is better than the old one, but. Of course, you can have problems. This is, a, uh, this is a problem also if you choose 32 bits with doubles, then it's much worse, the, the situation. But I'll talk about that too. And so this, the print is something that we have to decide whether the, it might be useful for print that is mainly for debugging, that you, you 
could know easily whether you are manipulating a, a floating point number or a integer number. So that could be useful, but again, would be a, a incompatibility. So this is something that we have to to think about. No, it's it's, it's all, all open. It's uh, we, we're not sure even if you are doing anything. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is very, very personal, I think. Uh, still, we are still discussing, we are not sure we are doing anything, or if you are doing, everything here is more or less open. It's, I mean, as I said, the, the, everything here is open. Some things are more or less decided. If you are doing to do anything, then probably it will be that way, but we are not sure that we are doing anything, and a lot of things are really completely undecided. <clears throat> and then the, this is the main point. Well, as I said, if both operan operands are integers, then the operation is an integer operation and the result is integer. Otherwise, everything is with doubles and the result and well, everything is doubles. The operation is performed with doubles, and the result is doubles, etc. So now, in the future, we are one divided by three is one zero. No, except division and exponentiation. So, yes, that's. And notice that there is something hidden here that is very important. That. This is already in the direction of uh, not exactly removing the coercion in Lua, but if the, any operation is a string, it's converted to doubles. I mean, you just keep the, if you're going to keep that for compatibility, then the strings are never integers because we assume all the old behavior we are, probably you, maybe you are going to throw away coercion too in, in Lua 5, but if we don't, in just to keep simple, the, pardon? So this is the, the, the main rule. And the main point here, yes, the problem is exponentiation is that uh, if you have a negative exponent, then so it's only performed with integers. If you have an integer, Base and a positive, non-negative integer as an x exponent. But and so this is the main point, of course, that except when you have overflows, it doesn't matter whether you are using integers or floats because all operations give exactly the same results. So that's what I, I meant when I, I said that is most of the time is transparent. It doesn't matter whether you're using floats or integers because they just behave exactly the same. That's the main idea of that. They are mostly equal, but when they are not equal, they are explicit different. It's not like, oh, the, there is something internal that is different, but it's not very clear. So that's. Just, <clears throat> on floats, and for overflows, exactly well, this is not even sometimes called overflows. With uh, this is one problem in Lua that if you are using floats and you are just adding one, and you start, I mean, you just start throwing away the ones and. Nothing happens, it's just the regular floating architecture that gives you that you add one and you keep, keep the same value. But with integers, then you have an explicit overflow, a concept, a more clear concept of overflow. And so what happens with integer overflows? We have three options. One is to convert to double. That it's best for compatibilities. It's good when you study two bit integers with doubles because then you, you get more bits. But if you use, for instance, 64 bits and doubles, you probably this is not one you want. 
not what you want. You have 64 bits. You, for instance, you add one, so it doesn't fit, so you change to 53 bits as a solution. So, I mean, it's, it doesn't seem very useful, this behavior. So, the other option is to raise an error, just throw an, throw an error if there is any overflow. This is bad for unsigned computations. And it's, it's considered more secure. About few languages do that. Most languages just wrap around or whatever. The check can be expensive, it, mainly for multiplication. That it's not very easy. I mean, the best check is mainly to do a division and, and see if the result keeps the same. So, and as I said, it's rule out some tricks, for instance, for unsigned integers that you assume that you want to wrap. And so the third option is to explicit have an explicit definition that integer operations wrap around. It's unsecure. You have some strange behavior sometimes. It, but it has its uses, and it's much cheaper to, I mean, much it's cheaper to, to implement. So this is something that is not at all clear what it should be. Some people suggested that, oh, you have some kind of pragma, but it is, never works well. You, you, sorry, you, you're suggesting that you have like overflows and extra operations for wrapping? So I'm saying it is more true in general that um, you want wrap around to do something like that, but it's pretty true for add. Yes, yes, yes. This is one option, yes, sure. Yes. But it's, if people are doing a lot of computations with that, it may, may not be. How expensive the, the, the checking? Oh, big numbers, yeah. Um, I think it's. Yes, yes. Yes, I think it has, a, and also it's bad for the API because you never know whether a number. I think one of the good things that I mentioned before is that the integers you have a very clear now because the API already have integers, for instance, and then you you know if you put an integer inside Lua with the API, you have exactly the same integer inside Lua. If I put, it, I do not change things when I cross the the API, and if I have these big numbers, I break that again. So again, I have, I have the problem. I, I, now what I do, if I have a big number and want to give it to the CAPI, then I have an overflow at that point. So I think it, it's, and, and it's a more expensive, I think, for this. It's, it's, this I, I think I prefer as an external library. I, I think this is very, um, maybe a personal, well, everything here is a personal opinion. But I think this is very attractive, but it's not really useful in, in general. I mean, for this is something that I, I think it's useful in some very specific situations. But in general, you hardly need that kind. It's very fancy to do a factorial of 100 and get that big, very big number. But it, usually it's not, that, I mean, it's not that common to, to need that. You have it? Is it possible or? Yeah, the, that could be, the, the problem is the reasonable API for this stuff, yeah. It's usually done anyway by users individually. If I expect that I might drop around, I will actually save the previous number that I had one, and then compare. If, and then if the number, instead of becoming larger, becomes smaller, <laughs> then it means they are up and up. So I don't think, I, I personally don't expect the language to carry my hand. Yeah, but for for sure it's much easier for the user to do the checking than for, for the implement because exactly for instance if you are adding one 
you know that the wraparound can only happen in that way. In a general addition, you have can, can adding negative numbers and so the checking. Although for for addition, the checking it's not easy. Just do some tricks with the sign bit, and you can see that. But for multiplication, for instance, then it's very very difficult to do a general. I mean, very very difficult. You mainly you have to do a division that is much more expensive than the multiplication. Check the result and still handle the special case where a division can do an overflow. There is, the, 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 there is one point where a division can overflow. Yeah, and how do you make an API for access to this you know, complex uh, formula, like the overflow thing? Or something? Yes, maybe you just keep that or, yeah. For instance, you might have a function like do this computation in, in, for instance, you have a flag, but you, you, you do not expose. You, for instance, you could have a, a kind of state in Lua that you say, I want overflows or I don't want overflows, for instance. Suppose you have a, a but that is a horrible API. But then you could have a function that is like, do this computation or call this function in wrapping mode. And then it changes the, 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 the mode, do the computation, and change back the mode. But I, I, I don't like any of these ideas, actually. I think they, uh, none of them are very good. Yeah, this is exactly this is one point that, that I like because it's simpler to implement. <laughs> Then we, could, then we need an extra value for invalid numbers and extra definitions, and then it's, you start to have extra, well. Yeah, that could, that could be maybe to produce not a number, for instance. We already have this value. We could just give not a number as the result of any wrapping. I not, don't know if it's any good. Yeah, if you do that, then Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to take a hit through all my numeric calculations just because it catches very few instances where some something is a wrap around. Yeah. No, but the. the I pay the price for this check and everything. No, but if you transform to a not a number, then. Yes, but I mean, we could define in Lua that overflows result in not a number. Yes, I understand. And then? Well, the, just the check for, over, for any of the options. I mean, if you are going to do anything except wrap around, then you need to check for overflows. So this price will be the same. As I mentioned, for the, mainly for multiplication is is expensive. For the others, it's not. It's just some bit. It's, a, it's it's not expensive. The check, and once it is not a number, then you don't have to check. I mean, you don't have to check the uh, the operands. You only have to check the result. So. The, the, the price would be the same to raise an error, to, to transform to not a number or anything. This option has the advantage that it's, you do not have to check anything. So it's a little simpler. And, and one of the things really is that this point I think is very important. And it's much, as you mentioned, it's, it's easier to, to oops. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. So well, so let's move because this is very already out of time. 
So integer division then is the, this is the main operation that is, you have different results. So you have two different operations here, a flow division, that is the current division, and an extra operation that is an integer division that does mainly would be the, the floor of the result of the division. So notice that this is something also, there is a small uh, subtle point whether we would convert the operands to integers before doing the operation or do the operation and just convert the result to an probably you choose the second option. So if you do an integer division with floating point numbers, you do the division in floating point and then get the floor. So the, the result is integer, but if you do not have non-integer operands, you have some And in particular, you have these uh, are good idioms in Lua that this operation converts, forces a number to be a float, and this operation forces force the number to be an integer. So the Use what, sorry? Mm -hmm. So, uh, this, like our Lua VM uses that as a comment because we have a lot of C programmers. That would conflict with. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a, the point about tables. When used as a key, then a float with an integer value will be converted to, to an integer. That is just, a, 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 just to, to, to keep things more regular because then we could, sometimes the one element could be one, sometimes it could be 1.0. You already have this problem with, with zero and minus zero currently. It, 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 whether the, the zero element in Lua is zero or minus zero depends what was the first time you use that index. This is very strange. If you use minus zero for store a value, then if you store a value with zero, it goes into the minus zero slot. <laughs> the, the index keeps. So this would be a way to reg to do that in a more regular way, so integer values would be use integer representations in tables. Pardon? No, no, I mean in the current implementation with, with doubles, not with, with integers. Oh, for to have the two results? Yeah, but I, I do want the slash slash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want, he can use that. <laughs> that should be very easy to change. I don't like the, 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 the slash. The, I, I mean, the, if anyone comes with a, I don't like the slash slash. But I, I still think it's the, the, the best option that I've seen till now. But. Huh? The list, yes, the list bad. Unless we use any code that you are not going to do. So, and of course, currently Lua already did, does these conversions of flow to integers internally. The difference is now it would be, now in the future it would be visible to the programmer that 1.0 becomes 1. So it's not going to be, ex actually it's going to be less expensive because if the number already is an integer, you don't have to do this check anymore. Currently Lua do, does that all time. Every time you index a table with a number, it checks whether the number is an integer and then proceeds. And now if the number is an integer, it doesn't have to check anything. It's just... How much time? I, I'm already out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay.
okay? <clears throat> for equality, if, if you use the same rules for, as arithmetic operations like uh, integers, I do equality using integers, anything else I, con I convert to floats to do equality, we have some nasty properties because, for instance, equality is not transitive because these two numbers are equal when compared as floats. These two numbers are equal when compared as floats, but these two numbers are different because they will be compared as integers. So this is very strange. Another definition would be the, the, the probably better, but I'm not sure, that the two numbers are equal if they're equal in both representations. I mean, if they are the same, if I see them as integers, they are the same numbers, and I see them as floating point, they are the same numbers. So it's a more strong equality, but of course the implementation is more expensive, but it's only more expensive when you are comparing uh, different types. So usually in the future, if you do that change, people will start to compare with 0.0, .0 for instance, it's when you are using floating points and that kind of things. And order, order again, we have some strange stuff because if you use the same rules as the, for arithmetic operations, we have some, oh, here is not very clear, I mean, Yes, if you use one rule, you have this problem. If you use the other rule, we have this problem. So order always will have some problem because either the equality, it is, the order is not compatible with the equality or if it is compatible with equality, then it's not transitive. So we have these problems. No, sorry. Sorry, I'm, well, it doesn't, the problem with order, there is both solutions have problems. One is that and the other is that you do not have a total order. So this is something that we have to think about how to compare elements with different types. Well, the C API, is, this is the, the, the good part. The C API already manages integers and, and floats separately. So it, it's, it's mainly ready for that. And then, as, as I mentioned, we have an explicit rule of how to convert a, a floating point to an integer in the API. It will follow the same rules to convert a floating point to integers inside Lua. And the unsigned probably would be an un, unsigned version of Lua integer. So the unsigned would be 64 bits 2 in a 64 bit implementation. And there are some small other issues. But it's, for instance, I will read probably we need two different options to read floating points and to read integers. And this problem of print, whether we should print differently. The, the, so these are just small issues that we have to, to decide. But this is. And so that is it. All right.